Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. If you saw it the other day on my channel, I uploaded a tutorial with our beautiful model, Caitlin Lawson. I'll show you right now how the look turned out. It, it, it was so, so beautiful. We kept the whole look very clean and um, polished. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to build on that to create a really uh, quite vibrant and edgy and sultry and cool green eyeshadow look. And we're gonna keep the lips nude but really polish off the skin for a beautiful highlight. So without further ado, if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking the one size translucent powder and placing a generous amount of this under the eyes. What this is going to do is it's going to catch any of that fallout we get from the eyeshadow. And then once we're done with the eye makeup, we'll sweep this right off. For the eye makeup, I'm starting out with this shade here from the Norvina Volume 2 eyeshadow palette and dusting this across the complete upper lid. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just going to act as the backdrop to the rest of the shadows we use. So in other words, it's our transition shade. And as I buff and blend this out, you'll notice I'll pack on a bit more of this to build up the pigment. And you'll also notice with each color I use, and the more precise the placement becomes, the smaller and more precise the eyeshadow brush I use becomes as well. So now that we have this diffused out, I'm dipping into the shade here from the same Norvina palette we just used and blending this into that first shade we just applied, more so focusing this on the outer and inner corners of the eye while staying away from the center. This eyeshadow look is all about building and building and building <laughs> the color story. So the footage is gonna be you know, a little longer today than it usually is, but only because I want you to truly see the time it takes to blend this out in real time. It does take a little patience and maybe a little bit of practice, but trust me, it pays off. It's going to look really, really beautiful. Alrighty, the shadow is blended in, so now I'm dipping into this shade here from the Morphe X Make It Black eyeshadow palette and using this to start building the shape I'm going for. I want something cool and edgy, but you know, still wearable, if that makes sense. So I'm using this shade to place in the inner corner as well as for a winged liner in just a minute. I placed it on with a lip brush, and now I'm using this smaller blending brush to diffuse out that pigment. By this point, you can kind of get an idea of the direction I'm taking with this. As I said, I want this to be edgy and artistic, but also something that didn't require a lot of precision work and detail, like um, like using a lot of graphic eyeliner and stuff. You guys know already, <laughs> precision work is just... It's not my thing. Some people have the gift and other people don't, like myself, which I've come to terms with. I'm okay with that because truth be told, I don't even enjoy doing crazy graphic eyeliner work. It causes me anxiety. My, my hands are too shaky. It just takes a lot of time. I'd rather spend that time on the complexion, you know, the, the skin. That's what I enjoy. So if you struggle with the same issues, I think this look is easier to achieve because... The blending of the shadows makes it a bit more forgiving. You know what I mean by that? Yes, it, it still does require a lot of back and forth, as you've seen here with the blending, but I don't know. I still find it easier, at least for me personally. But anyways, now that we have that dark green shadow placed in the areas I want, I'm mixing in that same green shadow with the black eyeshadow from that Morphe palette to deepen the green even more, then lightly placing this in the areas I want more depth and shadow. This is really the, the, the perfect palette to incorporate into this look. Plus, Morphe created this palette in partnership with Make It Black, so 100% of proceeds from this benefit Pull Up For Change. If you haven't heard of them, they're a, they're, um, a nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing the economic well-being of black communities all over the world. So. I thought that was pretty cool. And as you see here, by the way, I'm placing that dark green shadow through the lower lash line and kind of winging it out towards the end 
to create a double wing effect. I'm working in reverse in terms of the shadows I use. So on the upper lid, I started with the lightest shadows first and then worked my way down to the darkest. Whereas here for the lower lash line, I'm doing the opposite. I'm starting with the darkest and then working my way up to the lightest as I smoke this out. Afterwards, I take a step back, take a look at what's going on, see what needs to be adjusted. And in this case, I head back to that very first shade I used and placed a bit more of this in the center of the lid to really make it pop. Next, I'm grabbing this Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector and dabbing this on with my finger across the lid. This is in the shade Citrine, which is a sparkling golden yellow that I absolutely love. It catches the light so beautifully and photographs beautifully too. Remember when I showed you the photos that the photographer Roman Lopez took from the first look? Well, I'll include the pics here from this look that we took. It's so epic. He, he did such an incredible job. I love how different it is from the first look we did. And yeah, I'm in love. And by the way, here, I'm just starting to wipe away the fallout we've had from the shadows thus far, just to keep it clean. And then with this Urban Decay Eyeliner in the shade Electric Empire, I'm running this through the waterline. This is such a fun look that I didn't want to go in with a basic black or or brown or nude eyeliner for the waterline. I want to keep it spicy and fun. So that's why I reached for this eyeliner. It's the perfect green shade that complements the shadows we've used. And it has the slightest bit of metallic reflect in it. So it's going to catch the light and open the eye a bit. You'll even see me here in a second apply this to the lower portion of the tear duct right in that inner corner. And this adds for a nice little detail. Once we're done with this eyeliner, I'm going to grab the Lemonhead LA Glitter Paste in the shade Jailbait and apply this onto the inner corner of the eye and diffusing it upwards towards the center. Ooh, this is, this is my favorite part. <laughs> you all know how much I love my glitter and this, this right here, this is the cherry on top of the sundae for me. Look how stunning that is. This is really an easy glitter to work with too because the formula is a paste. So you don't have to apply on glue first to create a tacky base like you would usually have to with most other glitters. And also, I should point out that I'm not bringing this up any higher than where we apply the dark green eyeshadow. If I do, we'll lose that structure and shape we created. So keeping this under that area is best, but doesn't this make such a big difference? It just amps up the glam and brings it to another level. And I've been wanting to use this for the longest time in, in a tutorial, but you know, green, gl <laughs> green glitter can be a little tricky to incorporate into a look. So I'm really happy that I'm finally able to use this on camera. So once I have this applied and the look is starting to come together, I'm using this Inglot Black AMC Gel Eyeliner as the finishing touch. I'm using this with a tiny angled liner brush to first extend the inner corner of her eye before bringing this up to trace the upper lash line and winging it out. When you're working on top of glitter particles, I highly recommend using a gel eyeliner rather than a liquid pen or pencil. It's so much easier and, and I think it looks the best. And notice here how I drag out the end of the wing with my thumb. I don't know why I do that, but I, I like the way the wing looks when it's faded out towards the end. And then I'm gonna grab a little more eyeliner and lightly run this through the lower lash line, just on the outer half to give more dimension to the double winged we created here before replicating this on the other eye. Okay, now that we're done here with the liner, I'm going to move on to the lashes with this MAC False Lashes Maximizer and using this to prime the lashes before we apply mascara. This is going to nourish and enhance her natural lashes and give them more volume once the mascara is applied, which is exactly what I'm looking for because I decided that I didn't want to apply on false eyelashes for this look today. There's already so much happening with the eye makeup in a good way that I think lashes would have taken away from it. So we're gonna work with her natural lashes and get a, oh, oh my gosh. 
So while I was waiting for the primer to dry, I was figuring out how I could change up her hairstyle real quick. And let me tell you, a few blonde extensions and a scarf makes all the difference. <laughs> so now I'm taking this MAC Stack Micro Mascara from MAC and applying this right over that dried primer for both the top and bottom lashes. <laughs> Ugh, you all, if only you knew what went down behind the scenes. The extensions I used on her today literally looked like something my cat hacked up, like a furball. They had been sitting in a drawer for years, for years. So the day before we filmed this, I washed and toned and deep conditioned them before blowing them out and styling them. That hair... That hair was the real transformation here, not the model. She was already gorgeous to begin with, without my makeup. But the extensions, though, yeah, <laughs> not so much. In other news, can we talk about these lashes? They turned out absolutely perfect. So next up, I'm taking this one size Turn Up the Base Powder Foundation in the shade Light 2R and using this to dust away the setting powder we've let sit there underneath the eyes. So not only are we removing the setting powder and the fallout that's sitting on top of it, but we're also brightening the under eye with this powder foundation. In terms of color theory, red cancels out greens. So because this powder has a red undertone to it, it's going to help counteract any green residue we have on the skin from the green eyeshadows we used. After this, I'm using the same one size powder foundation, but this time in the shade Medium 1N for the rest of the face. If you saw the first tutorial I filmed with Caitlin that I posted on Tuesday on my channel, you know how we created this base makeup already. If you haven't, I'll link it down below. But because it was more on the natural side, I wanted to add this on for a more dramatic full glam effect by adding to the coverage with this powder. And then with the MAC Studio Fix Contour Palette, I'm using the deeper shades to add in some more contour and dimension to her cheekbones, temples, and jawline. For me, adding on these powder products made more sense than wiping the base makeup completely off and starting from scratch. And I think it's more realistic for many of us watching who want, you know, quick ways to glam up your daytime makeup for the evening. For blush, I'm using this Pink Dior Backstage Blush, which is actually the blush I used in the first tutorial as well, and I'm adding this onto the apples of her cheeks. You guys know how blush is. You apply it on, and two minutes later, it disappears into thin air, so I'm being quite generous with this. I think this baby pink shade really brings out and complements the vibrant greens we used in the eyeshadow, and it's not going to have to compete with a bold lip color since I'm keeping the lip as is. We both really love how the lip color turned out in the first look so we're sticking to it and then for some extra glow i'm using the plexiglass illuminator i created with my beauty brand i've applied this onto the back of my hand first and using a makeup sponge to apply it on with this is going to give a really beautiful glass-like glow to the skin i mean <laughs> look at that <laughs> I love this stuff. And notice how I'm tapping it on. I'm not dragging it or using a brush to rub it in because I don't want to disrupt the products we have underneath it already. Lightly layering this product on is key. And I'm only applying this to the areas I want that high shine from. So not all over the face, just, just the, the highest points of her cheekbones, down the bridge of her nose and a tad bit on the chin. Now that her skin is glowing, I'm using this iconic London Prep Set Glow Spray to add some glow to her body as well. I just spray it on and blend it out with a large powder brush. And I even found myself during this shoot using an old school trick of spraying on some sunscreen to the shoulders and chest for that extra glow, which makes for the perfect last step in how I created this vibrant look on our naturally beautiful model.
have it kids. I hope y'all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.